right we welcome back uh, i know there are few of your colleagues outside but uh, because the time uh, is uh, has little passed we will start the next part so i have a very pleasant task <coughs> that is to give a brief introduction to uh, next speaker i don't want to make it a very formal introduction because of two things one thing uh, he is a very good friend and a colleague and also i am pretty sure that uh, he is not the very formal and you know uh, this stereotype professor of the academic that you or most of the most of us think he is a very down to earth and very you know uh, a casual type of guy you can look at his attire and you can see how uh, the other professors in this faculty are wearing and so that doesn't make him any less so any thing is a it makes him a very special person let me introduce uh, professor professor uh, rangika umesh halwatura uh, he hails from kalutara uh, studied at kalutara vidyalaya from grade 1 to 13 so those things i know of and he graduated from the university of monotu as a civil engineer in 2004 and mind you he got his phd by 2008 so graduating from the university with your basic degree in 2004 and getting a phd in four years time is kind of a very difficult thing to do in a country like sri lanka but he has achieved that feat and uh, he became not only that when he graduated from the faculty uh, he won all the possible prizes that an undergraduate in his civil engineering field could have won at the convocation, right? So I'm not going to list those awards and these things except for a few important things today because the list is enormous. And then he became a chartered engineer in 2011. He joined the academic staff of the University of Morotua in 2006 as a lecturer on contract basis and proceeded to become a professor by the year 2016 at the very young age of 38 years and became the youngest professor in the field of engineering in this country has ever produced. I am pretty sure that record is still uh, remains unbroken and I am pretty sure to that matter that uh, in the foreseeable future there won't be a professor coming out of at 38 years from most of the faculties in this country. So he is that kind of an achiever. And not only that, he is a very innovative kind of achiever. So he has 15, or rather, is that 15, Rangika? Yeah, 15 pa patents to his name. 15 patents, right? And three industrial designs. He has already produced two, 12 PhD holders and uncountable number of MSCs and MPhils. He has also won very prestigious awards like the CVCD Most Outstanding. CVCD is the, uh, the, the committee of vice chancellors and directors of this uh, entire university system. It's a very prestigious award. The Most Outstanding Young Research Award in 2017 and also the Most Outstanding Innovator Award in 2023. And in 2017, he won the best young scientist award for the uh, for a scientist from a third world country from the world academy of science that is kind of a again uh, unparalleled achievement by uh, sri lankan and numerous presidential awards for academic publications and presidential presidential merit awards and he has won outstanding research awards from the university of morotu for the last 10 consecutive years right so the list goes on, so therefore I am not going to uh, go on with that list, but I am trying to highlight the fact that is if you make up your mind, you can achieve a lot irrespective of which field you are in. So you have to set some targets and so you have to, then you can achieve. And then not only that, uh, during his school days and uh, even now he is very keen on sports and doing various sports and more. If you visit his Facebook page, which I advise you to do, 
uh, you will realize that he's a fantastic photographer, right? Wildlife and nature, so, right? So there are so many achievements. So that is why the Faculty of Dental Sciences decided to invite Professor Halwatura to talk to you on the very first day of your university life. We could have very easily get a medical or a dental or a person, but we thought, why not? Right? So, because you have a lot to learn uh, from his character and from his achievements. So, without taking much time, uh, I have taken more time than I thought, but anyway, the, because of that is because of the uh, caliber of the person. So, I would like to invite Professor Rangik Halwatura to deliver his presentation. Right? So, I would don't want to call it a lecture. Right? Thank you. Thanks for inviting me for this uh, prestige event. Uh, well, I have visited many universities here and there, but uh, coming to Pera, then it's, uh, it's sort of a different mind story. As uh, Bunny, I mean, I, I call him Bunny because he was, he didn't tell one very important fact. I, I, I never wanted to uh, hear uh, what he was talking, but uh, there was one important fact he missed. Uh, that is, I was heading FUTA, Federation of University Teachers Association in 2016. That is not the fact but he was my secretary, so we were, we were real buddies uh, for many years. Uh, I think uh, even this faculty was, uh, I have many memories in this particular faculty, so coming back to this is another wonderful experience I got, so I, I wish to thank the invitees, uh, the, the people who invited me for this uh, prestige faculty. I mean, you are really fortunate. Uh, I couldn't enter to uh, Peradi University, I mean, Engineering, we always believe the Moritua is the best, so I went to Moritua. But I, I, I really love the, uh, the environment. You will definitely feel that particular love and the, uh, the attachment. You have five years to experience that. Uh, as Bunny stated, uh, you will be hearing many field-related uh, the, the topics, lectures uh, for five years. I'm going to talk about a totally different, different, different topic to you. It's not about engineering, but about a different uh, the topic, so uh, I'll try to make it a little sort of, I mean, non-technical uh, for you to understand it's better. Uh, you can see, uh, I don't mind even uh, switch off this light as well, so this is not that clear. Thank you. So uh, I'm going to talk about the innovation and sustainability, so it, those are two big terminologies, but I, I, I try to make it a little, uh, simple to you and uh, before moving to the uh, the topic i don't know how many of you will be able to understand there's a small video playing on the screen can you see that this is not a formal lecture so i, I really love to have the interaction with you so this will be sort of a, a stepping stone to your the five-year journey can someone guess what it is anyone you, are, you have studied biology, this is not engineering, this is, uh, this is completely different to engineering. I'm very sure you have, you have seen this, but not into this level. Anyone? Yeah, it's a coral, thanks. It's a coral, it's, a, it's sort of a uh, the macro uh, video which was taken uh, using this camera actually, this, this phone. Uh, the reason for me to put this particular uh, video as my first slide, you can see there are tiny creatures like fingers, so they are the people who cool the, uh, the polyps, so they are the one who give the glamour, the texture, the shape, and the, the size to the coral. If you give the right, uh, the condition, we'll let them to finish it. Yeah, that's fine. So if you give the right condition, the coral, the polyps, they will, they will do their job. It's like you people. So the staff, if you can give the, the right condition to the, uh, the students, as your former dean and your even the vice chancellor stated, you can be another coral 
another polyp who can shine the country. Because you know where we are now as a country, but this is, I'm not going to say this is the best country, but this is a blessed country. You can make this the, this is the best country one day if you really become a polyp. So if you, if you really wish to give the color, the glamour and the size and the shape to the country, the, the flu is yours and we people as staff, we will be able to give you the correct sense correct condition, correct environment, and you will take it forward. Actually, this is not uh, uh, not uh, 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 video uh, taken uh, in the sea. Actually, this is my uh, lab. Uh, I, have a coral, I have a small lab in my university, and I have some coral tanks. I do, uh, I, I, I can't say those are big, big research, tiny, small research I'm doing with the, the corals. Uh, we are doing a coral transplant, uh, you know, it's about, we lost about 90% of the, the coral reef around the country, so we are trying to plant the, the corals back. So this is a small video taken uh, in my lab using my phone, a macro image. You will not be able to macro video, you will not be able to see these polyps uh, in, uh, through your naked, naked eye. If you I, either dive or snorkel, you will not be able to see. You will be able to see the color, but you will not be able to see these tiny polyps. So this is a tiny, small video for you to understand what I'm going to do. From there, I will take you back to 3,000 years to the history of this country. That piece of clay, that is the oldest clay tile, the burnt clay tile ever found in Sri Lanka. The carbon dating, it goes to 3,000 years back to the history, from today, 3,000 years. Nothing big, I mean, you, you get the clay, you just stab it, get the shape, have a small hole at the top, and you, they, they burn it, and they created their basic shelter. I'm again reiterating, 3,000 years back. Well, that is nothing new. You compare, you, you take your knowledge, you take your, this environment, you will see, I mean, what is this? It's nothing. But really, you won't believe this particular tile, tile if you go to any museum in the country, You'll not be able to see it unless you come to my small lab. I could always say that's my small, tiny family at the university. So this tile is there at my university because I'm doing a PhD on this particular tile to understand how they decoded or, or, or how they developed this particular technology, how that particular technology and the thinking came to their mind 3,000 years back. Even the Lord Buddha, you name any religious leader, these people were well before that. Just think, if you go to that era, you will understand this really, really wow. Forget it. I'm coming to my right, so the, uh, the left hand side. That's again another roof tile. The history says uh, that is 1800 years back. And you can see uh, the cross section that is to my, my fingers. I mean, that's, that's my two fingers. So with that, you will be able to see the, uh, the, the layer thickness. So that tile, it's a, uh, the clay press tile, it's the same as the Calicut tile which you have uh, on, your, on your roof at the, I mean, even there I can see the, that roof is Calicut. Those are all pressed burn tiles. This again the same. But the, the beauty or the, the wow factor is, they have a tiny thin glass layer on top of the, the clay layer. This is Anuradhapura. Actually, the, the first tile was found 32 feet down where you can see as Anuradhapura today. 32 feet down. This was found near Jetavana Ramya, again about 10 feet down. We got this particular piece of tile with the glass layer. You have studied science for your O levels and A levels. You know about the coefficient of thermal expansion. Two different materials have two different coefficient of thermal expansion. You, you, you give the temperature they will expand in two different ways. That's the science you and I have learned at the university or other the school. These again two materials, wet form, they had the, the clay, over it they had the, the glaze layer and they burned this to a temperature of 850 centigrade, not a single crack on the, the tile, amazing. It's really amazing how they mesh or rather brush the, the coefficient of thermal expansion. Even at a high temperature of 850, they are still intact. No separation. 
Forget the science. We'll go to the Anuradhapura now. Anuradhapura, it's not like Norelia and Candy. It's really hot. Even here, if you really, I mean, let's say your home, if you really want to have the, the comfort inside, what you do is you lay the tile, you have insulation layer, and you try to achieve the, the comfort, uh, or maybe a fan, using a fan or a air conditioner. But these people, I mean, that's we basically we let the heat to enter into the building and then have a barrier. That is what we do today in the 21st century, even in the 21st century. But these people just think 1,800 years ago, they found a mechanism to reflect the heat at the top level. Just think, from where they got this particular right? They didn't come to Peradin University or Morocco University to study soil engineering or engineering. They never went to a school to study science. From there where they got this particular knowledge. That tile, more than 3,000 years old, still give the same shape. Still today you have the tile. How they knew, or rather how they knew, by burning, they can convert the material, that is material science, that is material engineering. They never went to Morotu or Pera, they need to study the, the material engineering, not even grade one. They learned all and everything through the nature. By learning, studying, and observing the nature, they learned all, and that knowledge is much more advanced than you and I know today. From there, like me, I mean, that's my field, go to construction, I mean, I can bring thousands and thousands of examples for you to show that the history, I'm, I'm not really talking about this Ravana, these, these stories, but the real, real visual, uh, the, the stories, we'll take one, we'll, we'll go to this uh, uh, Dambulu Vihara. It's just a small cave, different story, but the paintings, the paints, the colors were not really imported from another country. That's all made in Sri Lanka and still after a thousand years, still you can see the same colors. Forget the colors, but to get the real, uh, the color of these painting, what they did was they got the, the sunlight, the natural light into the building and they managed to give the exact color which they painted. Today we have some flashlights, but those days it was all natural. Forget that. You take this building, even there, you will be able to find some places with some mold growth. Pusadeno. That is there. But this building, it is not there that they achieve that particular condition inside by creating the turbulence inside the building. The turbulence was created by creating these massive structures inside the cave. For you to do this today, you need to have finite element simulations and the wind tunnel models even at University of Moridua. But these people, without knowing any basics of finite element simulations, they created this even today I mean, I can't understand how they have done it. We are trying to decode these paintings. I'll, I'll show you some of them in the in, uh, in, 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 in future. But all these ones are either natural or neo-natural. So that is the basis of sustainability. From the construction, if I go to the, the food and agriculture, one could say, I mean, there were about 1,000 or 2,000 numbers of people who lived in Anuradhapura and Poronor era. They went to the jungle, picked something, ate and died. I'm not going to believe that. If you go to the previous slide, the, the, the one which I showed you about the construction, there could have been millions of millions of people who lived in Anuradhapura era and Polonaru era. But they knew one simple fact which you and I don't want to believe. That is, they knew that they're going to die one day. We, even at the ICU, we're trying to stay or have another extra second to live. But these people, they knew that they are going to die one day and they, give the, they made the minimum harm to the nature and they had a much more happier life than you and I enjoying today. I'm not going to say, I mean, uh, trying to live is, is bad. I mean, it's good. But at the same time, you have to understand you are going to leave this world one day. So they, they did the minimum harm, got the maximum productivity, and they had a happier life than what you and I was, ex I mean, observing or are they enjoying today. From there to your field, once again, all natural or near natural. I'll, I'll pick one uh, <coughs> example again from the history. There's something called Rasa Vedakama. I don't know how many of you are aware of this Rasa Vedakama. You know about mercury? You know mercury, right? What do you do with mercury? When you get stress, 
Is that what you do? No, I mean, we normally don't allow students to touch mercury because it's really heavy. I mean, heavy, heavy metal and it goes in, it can cause cancer. That's the, the layman knowledge I have as an engineer, but you may be having a different uh, 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 sort of a uh, definition. But anyway, the mercury is bad. But the people who lived in this particular blessed country, I'm not going to say again, not the best, but the blessed country, they got the mercury, put on a stone cup, Galkova, and they were working with the material for days and weeks and converted mercury to a drinkable drug carrier. Just imagine. Mercury, even today this Rasavedakama exists. So you can, you can study about this Rasavedakama. So they converted mercury, the pure mercury, to a drinkable drug carrier. Like what you, I mean, you take any capsule, it's about 0.1% of the, the drug, the rest is the, the carrier. They found, or rather they, they invented a drug carrier using mercury. Just imagine. So mercury is a heavy metal. You people who are in the 21st century, we are not allowed to even touch mercury. But these people, they converted mercury as a drug carrier. Wow, wow, wow. So every time this stone stick touches the stone cup, the mercury broken into another level. We talked about the nanotechnology today. But the, and, and we say the, the father of, fathers of uh, the nanotechnology, that is West, but the real fathers of nanotechnology is basically from this particular blessed country. That is what, that is why the mercury can be rather drink today, while today we say it's a heavy metal, don't touch. Just imagine the level of knowledge these people had. They knew even about the nanotechnology. That is the, the modernest science in the today's world. Well, so from natural, near natural to where we are today. The top image, it's a poor, 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 a very poor house. The middle one, I could say a poor house. The bottom one, wow, the super state of the art with all the green features, sensors are there. When the light drops, you will get the, the lights on automatically. When you are entering, when you are reaching the, 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 the gate, gate will be automatically open. When you reach, the lights will automatically on. All the sensors are there. And when you talk about the sustainability and green, we always point the, the bottom, not the, the two top. We'll forget these three houses. I, I'm going to take you to a different and a noon place. This is the main street that was before the independence, that is when the Sri Lanka was very poor, before the independence. And today, that is the main street. If you, if you, if you just walk into the main street, that's it. I don't know whether we are developed or developing, but I, I, I still believe, I mean, now, now I believe it's, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are into the developed state, not, not, not that you know, we are developing anymore, we are developed. Unless you start developing the country again, we will be there forever. So we are developed, either we will go down, that's all depend on you. So that is the main state today, whether we are developed or developing. The previous one is, we are poor. So from there, I'm going to take you to the, the, wo the world modernist city, that is Hong Kong city. You go and type what is the most modernist city in the world, that is Hong Kong. The state of the art, green, sustainable city in the world. When you talk about the sustainable, sustainability and the green, we always forget those and we always point to these structures. We never talked about the people who lived in those houses. If you now compare or the, the sense of these people, they have a very less amount, number of problems and they are trying to solve their problems in the natural or in the near natural way. But you people, or rather we people, we have the most complex life pattern, thousands of problems, sophisticated problems, and we, we get the so-called science and we try to solve them in the, the best possible way. Again, you will get thousands of sophisticated answers. Out of the sophisticated answers, we will again use the science, do another PhD to find the best and say, see, I mean, we found the best, the sustainable solution. The starting point was sophisticated problems. Whereas the other people who lived in those structures, they have 
the very minimum questions or the problems and they were solving them in the natural law, near natural way. But they are not really happy because we have set the benchmark saying, look, I mean, that is the best life you should have to have. But really speaking, they are the people who are having the, the best life. So because of these, uh, uh, I'm not going to say the madness, but anyway, for some reason, we are heading to a big disaster now. None of these things are the, the computer jail marks. It exists today. I don't know whether how many of you can remember the COVID uh, that was happening in 2009 in because Sri Lanka, they we normally don't remember things more than a week or more than three weeks. That, that's a very no, known and a common fact. But uh, let me show you one uh, interesting uh, image from China. This image was taken in a busy city in China that was into, uh, before the 2019, that's, uh, that's uh, the China. And uh, if you can remember, the 2019 China went for a, uh, the, the complete shutdown, 2019 December. So they shut down the, the entire country uh, because of COVID. Exactly nine, uh, the 14 days after the lockdown, the same place looks like this. So 400, 200, 300 years, that is what you and I did. And that's what the nation recovers within 14 days. If you can't remember COVID, let me take you to Colombo. So this is normal Colombo. In 2022, December, there were unauthorized visitors from India. They came to Sri Lanka without getting visa. So there was a dark cloud over Sri Lanka, passed, I mean, entered from Jaffna, going up to uh, Hambantota. So that covers the entire Colombo last, not last year, year before, December, the entire Kalambo looks like that. You could say, I mean, that was not Sri Lankan, that was done by the, the Indians, but still, that's humans are doing the real damage. And you can see, where are we now? Even Kandy, I mean, we, we, we feel the comfort, but you measure the, the, the air quality, the sort of one of the worst in the country. So we are heading for a big, big disaster, unless we understood this, and change, try to change this, we are heading for a big disaster. So that is what I wanted to talk to you today. So this is what we were expecting from the starting from the monkey with artificial intelligence and the, uh, nanotechnology, you name any, techno, any, any, any modern science, walk with the, the modern science, but exactly this is what was happening. So every step we put forward, whatever the, the discipline, whether it's dental science or medicine or engineering or whatever, we invented the science while destroying the nature. So this is high time for us to understand this disaster. If not, we will be heading for a big, big disaster, not you or not the, the next generation. You yourself will be able to face it. Interesting cartoon from the internet. You and I having a chat with uh, the sun. So he called the sun and say, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't live anymore. You go to your settings, go to your brightness, the, the, go to display, go to your brightness, reduce the brightness level. It's too hot for us to stay anymore. The sun replies saying, I'm sorry, I haven't done any changes to my settings for millions of years. It's you ha who have changed, the, uh, changed your settings. You need to plant number of trees, you, had, you need to increase so and so. And finally, 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 sun gives a very strong message. He says, like you are changing your mode in your phone, please go and change your mode in your settings. Go to your human mode from your auto mode. You are no longer a human anymore. You are automated creature now. You are trapped with the technology. You need to come out from this and go to your human mode. I mean, it's, it's something you need, to, you need to study for years and years for you to understand where you are, if you are really, really trapped with the technology. Unfortunately, this is what exactly has happened. We have forgotten our, uh, the base and the foundation and we have shifted the mood from human to auto mode and it's high time for us to come back to the, the human mode. If not, it's a big disaster in the near future. Right, so that's the message I want to share with you, but uh, 
since this is sort of a invited speech i should uh, i should talk about myself so if anybody asks uh, who am i who is this rangika this is what i am going to show it's not to say that you know i'm having a bath every morning that's a different story whether to have a bath or not it's a different story but this is me so this is me means uh, i always love to find a problem existed in the community and try to solve it in a natural or a near natural way when everybody was busy with the technology i'm i'm a, I'm a free bird I, I, i was basically enjoying the nature if i further and further elaborated myself i'll be like this i'm not a musician i'm not a tabla player but this is what exactly i'm doing i get the uh, the technology component get this get the the natural component put them together in music this is what the musicians are doing but in real science this is what i'm doing so my entire life was changed by this particular small creature which would be the varan kumbala so uh, in 2013 actually i started uh, going into real invention and innovations so this vespubi has changed my entire life if you closely observe what this vespubi is doing he get the the clay mix with saliva and make a thin wall for the next generation not for generations we say sustainability by creating structures which are lasting thousand years by violating and uh, depriving the the creativity the the everything of many generations down the line and still we say we are sustainable but this creature he create a nest for the next generation if the next generation wants to build another cage same place still the option is there so from there if anybody asks what is the best uh, the con most comfortable house or the building which i have ever uh, ever lived in i could say this varichi or the uh, the the structures with which are made out of clay so that has a real comfort the natural comfort so all these things inspired me to develop my first patent and i didn't stop at that particular point i if you look at this or rather observe what this particular bird bird is doing the previous one was not that strong but this cage is stronger than the previous one the reason is he mix some fiber with the the clay and make a strong wall so all these things inspired me i'm i'm a person who loves to work with the circular economy not the not in the linear economy not to get the virgin material and do something and take it out i always love to work with uh the industrial waste or the waste material so you you can see the full list of uh, materials we we tried we we tried with natural natural uh, the binders even daul kurundu from there to waste materials so we work with so many materials and finally 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 we managed to create six patents out of this soil technology and they are not just patents they are in the in the market at the moment and the people are using so uh, this is not really me it's a big team working together i mean that's my biggest success i could say i never wanted to take engineers to my research group even though i i mean accidentally i i pick one or two but other than that i always love to work with other disciplines because i'm a civil engineer why i need another person with the same knowledge so i always love to get the get the people with other disciplines unfortunately i don't have a research friend uh, with your discipline we'll see one day i'll be able to do something with you as well so you can see the the big team who developed this so that's that's something uh, you need to understand i mean i always say 1 plus 1 in mathematics is 2 it cannot be 3 but you take and if you start working in a team if you if you pitch the the correct team it can be in millions but if you pick the wrong choice it can i mean it it can deprive your creativity as well but still if you can get together and start working together within your community and start working with the other communities let's say you work with engineering student you work with uh, the art uh, the sociology or uh, uh, the political science where uh, the the person then your your the knowledge pool will increase i'm i'm so proud and happy to say that you know i i was inspired many times by uh the people from art faculty in kalamb unfortunately i didn't uh, had a time to come and stay with your staff but i was i was always uh, being with the faculty club in kalamb university so i was i i had the opportunity of engaging with other other disciplines other other professional people and i found wow i mean engineers are in 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 now in small silo and say i mean wow i mean we, we are the bosses in the country but when you pass the the university gate not even a dog knows you but <laughs> but <laughs> when it when it goes to other disciplines 
that's different. So their, their, their knowledge and the, their, 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 the creativity, their thinking is completely different. I mean, you also should have to have that particular exposure. You have that particular luxury within the university itself. You, you are here, the medical faculty is another place, and when you go to your main university, you have all the disciplines coming from various places. Always love to, I mean, try to get that particular exposure because the life, I always believe, the life, if you really want to enjoy and be happy and be strong with your character in your future, what matters is not your degree, not your degree certificate, not the knowledge you get. What, what matters is the connectivity and the, the exposure you get. More the connectivity, more you expose, you will be there. I, that's what I, I, I always believe. I'm, I don't know whether, whether it's different to your discipline, but you can be a real human if you are connected more and if you are exposed more. Exposing is not to go and visit other countries, even within your community. There are a lot of layers here and there for you to go and observe. So that's one, I mean, sort of, that was the success story behind me. Let me show you one or some, some few more examples. This is, I mean, you all know the, the mirror bar, the Kadapath powder. So this was another inspiration which came to my mind when I was walking on this, uh, along this uh, Sigiriya mirror bar, the Kadapath powder. Even you visit today, still you can see the same reflection. So that was done 1,000 years ago, all right? But still, you can have, or rather you can see the, the same reflection on this mirror wall. So we want to decode this particular technology, and we started uh, working with uh, the water alarm surge. You take the, uh, the water you drink today, it's colorless. But the water in the river, it's with a brown color. So what you do is, chemically you are adding alum to settle these tiny, tiny, tiny clay particles, and it's a big waste all over the world now. So we wanted to find a solution. We started with the, the water alum sludge. You can see the types of materials we have tried. And finally, 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 we managed to decode the same mirror wall, the material out of the clay alum sludge, which was a big disaster. And it goes to the, uh, the landfills. And it's a huge disaster worldwide. So finally, we managed to find a solution for that. And the, the last uh, year, 2022, I got the, the Ecovation Award for this particular product. And it's in the market at the moment. Uh, you may have seen these uh, tiny, tiny projections in trees many times. So that was something which, uh, which uh, actually, which I, which I uh, start understanding by reading uh, Mahavansha and Tupavansha, you may, you may wonder what the hell he's doing with Mahavansha and Tupavansha. But you go to Attakata, you won't believe there are a lot of hidden knowledge in Attakata. But unfortunately, we can't read them. We need to have uh, uh, the assistance of an archaeological person who can read Pali. So I had that particular luxury within my research team. So we started decoding the ancient, the coating technology which was there over the Sigiriya painting. So we started with them, we got the, uh, the extracts, and finally we'll, we work out in the, in the laboratory, and finally, 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 we managed to decode that particular ancient painting technology at my small lab at the university. So again, all these materials which are developed by my team, it's not a single effort, uh, uh, the, the effort, it's a big team behind. So all my PhD students, they were hard, I mean, work hardly on these ma uh, the material development, and finally they managed to develop these materials. Well, this very very recent uh, development, I mean, in, in air conditioning, uh, the buildings, the CO2 level and the, the, the air is not that uh, the quality. Even even I mean, we talked about the candy, the air, in the air quality is uh, uh, it's really bad. So we train trees, some are local trees, you know about Tipili. So we train the trees with some light. And the trees are capable of absorbing the air pollutants from the, uh, the, the uh, environment. And we created sort of a hybrid IoT-based technology very recently, and again a patented product. And that can be installed in any building if you really wish to reduce or to control the, the indoor air quality. So once again, it's, it's not a. Uh, uh, a small team, you can see there are, there are big people uh, with other disciplines working in that particular team as well. Uh, this is again an interesting uh, 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 slide. Uh, this takes 13,000 years back to our history. We had a pottery industry in Sri Lanka that is called red and blackware. 
So you can see the two colors. It's not a mistake. I mean, it's, it's purposely made, red and black, that has a lo lot of other advantages with respect, respect to the food quality. So this particular technology was, we, I mean, you, you go with the evidence, evidence-based history. The history goes back to 13,000 years back and came up to uh, 800 BC. And after that, this was vanished from the history. So we wanted to decode the, the same technology and uh, we were working uh, in uh, remote villages in uh, Anuradhapura. So finally, 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 we managed to very recently decode our own history, which has a historical a story of 13,000 years back. And finally, we managed to create the same black and red bear, which had a long history. So once again, it's not the uh, not only the scientists, you can see even the, the people who graduated with an art degree are in the, the scientific the community. Once again, it's a big team. You can see a lot of people worked with me to decode this particular technology at my lab. And not even the, the scientists, not even the, uh, the graduates, even the people who doesn't even have gone to a school has helped to develop this particular technology. If you can remember, I started talking about uh, a coral. That's in uh, 2014, Okinawa Beach. It was a beautiful coral reef, but unfortunately, the entire coral reef died. And in 2014, they decided to replant or transplant the corals. And 2014, they planted tiny coral pieces. They are in the Okinawa Beach. That is 2014. 2022, 23, now it is 24. It's a thick coral jungle. If you do the right thing with the right team, with the right intention at the right time, the rest is, is really nothing. So what matters is to find your team, the time, inspiration, and the direction. You will be a successful person. And you will not be a person, you will be the person. To creating your character, the brand matters you to be successful. It's not the, uh, the branded, uh, the kit you dress, it's not, uh, the utter, it's not about the way you talk. What matters is creating your own brand that is inside you. That is inside you, really. I'll not be able to tell you what is your brand, how you need to develop it. You need to read yourself. If you read yourself, you will be able to understand the person who's living inside you. That has to be done. Otherwise, you have 1,000 odd uh, dentists, uh, the, the dental surgeons in five years uh, down the line, all will be dental surgeons. So that will not make any difference. But if you can bring your creativity and you will be the person, not a person. You will be a specialist, not a specialist. You will be the, the specialist within the country or maybe within the world. This image, uh, I always love to uh, show this image. It's not my uh, the parents, it's not my grandparents. In 2014, and, I mean, fortunately, uh, I managed to, uh, uh, actually I met this, uh, uh, the, the couple uh, in Kirinochi, you know, we had a, I don't know how many of you can remember that, uh, we had a very, 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 uh, I mean, uh, hidden uh, sort of a sad uh, period in the country, 30s of war, 30 years of war, and uh, 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 there, there was a, uh, the housing project uh, which was introduced by the, the UN, and they were building homes, or rather houses, we can't say home because they will not feel it has a home, it's a, it's a house for them, uh, for war-affected communities. This family, they lost their, their children's no uh, relations, nobody, only these two. They were living in an eight, eight feet by eight feet uh, small shelter in the, the same, same land. So I, I managed to, uh, actually UN invited me to uh, support them with my inventions and I, 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 I happened to build a house for them. And you will, you will understand this smile this shows that this house is not a house anymore, it's a home. So if I'm here, I always believe. It's not a, that LOL type smile, it's a very genuine smile. So if I'm here, I always believe that is thanks to this smile. Thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, Professor Halvatur. I think uh, after years, years and years of uh, similar kind of uh, lectures that we've been witnessing and seeing, uh, we were able to uh, witness something different. And I'm sure that you must have uh, stirred up these young minds uh, something at the very beginning of their career, I mean, uh, just the, the start of it, which I think if I, we had that uh, sort of challenge, uh, it would have made a bit more difference as well. So, lot, lot to think out of your presentation. This is what is necessary for Sri Lanka, I suppose, especially at the plight that we are in right at the moment. We can't be traditional anymore. We can't depend on what we get free. And we need to produce something, which is something new. Uh, I think you, every message is, was there. And it is not something new, as you mentioned, that was there, uh, which we haven't sort of paid uh, attention, it seems. Uh, so it's, it's sad. So I'm so grateful to you coming all the way from Colombo and uh, delivering this speech. I'm sure that uh, we are proud of you and we want more like you uh, in the future in the university system as well as for the country. So thank you very much. May I invite you to come back to the stage for a small token of appreciation. Thank you very much.